a few slides. So this one, uh, so we, we stop here uh, this morning. And then the, the next one uh, is about the redshift. Um, I'll go uh, pretty pretty fast on, on, on that, but uh, so the, the idea is that uh, similarly to the radius of an observer, uh, looking at a neutron star is uh, different from the uh, radius that you obtain from, uh, I mean, in the, in the frame, uh, if you sit on top of a neutron star, uh, if you um, look at uh, the light uh, coming from a neutron star, it is redshifted by the uh, gravitational potential. Okay, and uh, so you can evaluate this redshift by looking at the wave uh, length of uh, the light of an observer at an infinite distance um, compared to the wavelengths of the same light that would be emitted from the surface of a neutron star. And this is what uh, you uh, obtain. Uh, so this is called the, the redshift. Okay, and this is somehow the ratio of uh, the, 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 um, the wavelengths uh, for an observer uh, out of the neutron star divided by the wavelengths of uh, the light emitted from the surface of a neutron star and, and, and minus one. Okay, so this is this, this ratio. And uh, from the previous slide, you, 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 you can replace the ratio of the radii uh, just by, um, by, this, uh, uh, by this gravitational uh, general relativistic uh, factor. Um, and uh, you you could uh, also uh, analyze, or you could believe the the people who have analyzed uh, a gamma ray bursts. Uh, so this one. Um, so they made some some work. Uh, I don't want to to go further into uh, what they have done. Um, but uh, uh, simply from, uh, from, from the observed peak, they were able to determine uh, a redshift, a gravitational wave redshift associated to this uh, GRB, uh, which is something like 0 0.22. And again, this will be the exercise. We, uh, you can, for instance, compute for a given equatorial state, the redshift as a function of the mass. And if you report this value on this axis uh, for, a give, for this equation of state, then you obtain a mass which is compatible with the canonical mass of neutron star. So in a way, uh, it, uh, it indicates that uh, you are not uh, uh, doing uh, stupid things. Okay, rotating neutron stars, uh, we will uh, drop. And then I just want to say a few words. I mean, most probably you, uh, so about, about neutron stars. So they are somehow spherical objects and uh, they uh, have a structure which, uh, is, um, um, which is very spherical and um, that can be decomposed into uh, different uh, regions. So you have the crust of a neutron star and you have the core. So the crust of a neutron star is about 10% in radius of the whole system and about 1% in mass of the whole system. Okay, so it, it counts for uh, a fraction of the whole system. Uh, so the crust is there. Uh, so all this uh, this part is uh, the uh, core of a neutron star, and the crust is um, separated into two uh, different regions, which are called the outer crust, the part which is uh, more external, and the inner crust. And the difference between the two, for nuclear physicists, is very easy to understand. This is where stands where where is the neutron drip line. Okay, so when you produce uh, elements um, in an accelerator, you could produce different isotopes by um, making them more and more neutron rich. 
until you reach uh, the neutron drip line, which is um, the uh, uh, which uh, which indicates you that you have uh, uh, put too many neutrons in your system, and the additional neutron is not accepted by the system. And how do you evaluate whether it is accepted or not? It is with the chemical potential. So the chemical potential uh, translates the um, appetizer, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the willing of uh, the uh, nucleus to accept or not um, an additional particles. So if the neutron chemical potential is negative, it means that you gain some energy by, uh, by, 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 by getting an additional neutrons. And if it is positive, then it means that you don't gain energy. So uh, naturally, you would, not, you would refuse to take an additional neutron. And uh, so this is the definition of the neutron drip line. You can do it for, um, uh, 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 I mean, by adding one neutron, or you can also uh, do it by adding two neutrons, and you can, uh, I mean, it, it, is, it, is, it is quite compatible. Uh, and in a neutron star, you have exactly the same thing. So in the outer crust of neutron stars, you have nuclei that you can produce on Earth. They are neutron rich, but they are below the, the neutron drip line. And then you, uh, you pass the drip line, and below, after the drip line, you continue to enrich the system and to put more neutrons in, into, into it. You will see later uh, why, uh, when the density increase, increases, the number of neutrons, uh, the matter become more and more neutron rich. Um, and then we enter into the um, inner crust, where these additional neutrons, which uh, are unstable and are not bound in uh, lab experiments, in the context of neutron stars, because of gravity, the whole system is bound. So the neutrons, they are, um, uh, they are free to propagate and to diffuse from one cluster to another, from one uh, nuclear cluster to another, and they form a, a sea of neutrons. Okay, so, in, uh, so the difference between, uh, so this is here the outer crust, and this is here the inner crust, is uh, the presence, is related to the presence of these uh, free uh, neutrons, which could scatter uh, through uh, the crust uh, from, uh, from, one, uh, from one cluster to another. And then you continue to increase the density. And what uh, occurs is that the nuclear clusters, they get closer and closer. And at, uh, at a density which is, um, uh, which is, which is uh, close to the saturation density of finite nuclei, um, in fact, um, neutrons and protons, they prefer to be free instead of being bounded in uh, nuclear clusters. And this is the transition from the crust to the core. The core is characterized by the fact that neutrons and protons uh, are, are free uh, and they are not anymore bound in, uh, in nuclear clusters. Okay, and then the remaining question is you continue to increase the density and uh, what uh, exists in the center of a neutron star? Do you still have neutrons and protons uh, as before, or do you have new degrees of freedom? And this is, uh, this is, and if you have new degrees of freedom and new phase transitions, then um, you, you say that in the uh, inner, inner core, um, you, uh, then you define this inner core uh, as the place where you have this, uh, this new degrees of freedom. Okay, so this was my uh, last slide for this uh, morning lecture and take questions, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, you, 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 if it rotates fast enough, then of course at the equator it becomes slightly. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. So you, you have um, a flattening of the pole and, uh, and, and the, and uh, in fact, uh, yeah. So you, you, you can define. So this is a slide that I was just. So you can define. Uh, in the case of rotating neutron stars, you can def define a Kepler, the Kepler frequency, which is 
the maximum speed, the maximum rotation before the star break apart. Okay, uh, and uh, that also is a, is a way. So if you can observe, because uh, uh, so uh, neutron stars they are pulsars, so you can observe the pulse, and uh, for from the time between two pulses, you can determine how fast they speed. And uh, presently, we are searching for sub -milli millisecond pulsars. And if they are found, yet they are not found, but if uh, really fast spinning neutron stars are found, then it would, uh, it would bring um, some uh, constraints on the equation of state because not all the equation of state can, uh, can, can uh, accept uh, neutron stars to spin very fast. Yes, yeah, yeah. Before they break apart, they, 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 they start to be elongated. Yes, I don't have any, any picture, but this is pretty standard. And there are codes uh, uh, that uh, describe uh, rotating neutron stars and, and do it very well. Any addition? Yeah. Uh, because of be, be, because of the gravity, which is extremely large, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question? No? Okay, so uh, now we can move to this um, exercise uh, session or the, the coding session. Um, yeah, the hand-on session with uh, Einstein trap in his uh, singularity. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me let me just uh, go. Okay. So that we discussed this morning. So it's uh, I guess it is very fresh in your mind, and this is what uh, what uh, what uh, motivates us, uh, nuclear physicists, uh, hadron physicists, uh, I mean microscopic physicists, in investigating uh, neutron stars because. We would like to uh, understand what uh, dense matter is composed uh, of, and, uh, and neutron stars uh, give us some information about that. Okay, so uh, what we were doing, yes, so, uh, so the code uh, that uh, you have uh, allows you to solve these equations. Okay, the T of E equations, assuming spherical symmetry, so it works for, uh, in principle, it works perfectly for non-rotating neutron stars, uh, but it can also be used for rotating neutron stars, and uh, as uh, Professor Bobacci said, uh, that uh, works for even very fast speeding neutron stars, and it is uh, really for, for the for the fastest one that uh, you really need to uh, introduce and to describe uh, rotation in the game. So, uh, for so it's a good uh, it's a good uh, good news, and uh, uh, we will uh, therefore uh, make uh, the thing quite simple in in the solution of the theory. Uh, okay, so that I skip because it's a bit technical. Uh, so, just uh, a few words about uh, how uh, the solver works. Okay, so um, um, if you have looked at the uh, code um, and enter it, you you have observed certainly that uh, uh, there are um, some files. 
which uh, provides equational state. Okay, so we will not compute equational state. We will suppose that someone is uh, was nice enough to give us an equational state. Okay, and in the form of a table that we will in, uh, that we will spline uh, and interpolate. Okay, so this is uh, an input. Uh, it is the equational state. Then there are also uh, there is also another input, which is um, the central density that we uh, consider, or the set of central densities. So in the code, uh, you can uh, uh, you can you can give uh, to the, to the to the solver uh, any uh, array containing different uh, central densities, and it will compute for each of them, it will compute and it will give you an answer ordered according to, so it's uh, to the to the central density, uh, the central pressure that you have uh, given to, to the solver. So uh, usually we give um, it by increasing number, but it can be by any random number because each calculation is independent from the, from the previous one. Okay, so, so you, you need, two inputs, okay? So the equation of state, we have seen this morning that it is one uh, of the equations which allows uh, to close the system and uh, therefore to get a solution, and uh, one or a set of, uh, of, uh, some, of uh, central pressures. And then uh, the, you have uh, the TOV sample, uh, sample uh, solver, excuse me, uh, and uh, it will, uh, so what it does is that uh, it solves the uh, TOV uh, differential equation um, uh, in coordinate space uh, by uh, going from r equals zero towards uh, the point where the pressure uh, uh, passed by zero and uh, which defines the radius of the star. Okay, and then uh, the output of the solver will be uh, the solutions. Okay, so the solutions. So if you if you give only one central pressure, you will get one solution. If you give two, you get two solutions. If you give ten, you get ten solutions, and they are ordered uh, in the same way as uh, you provided uh, as you gave the central pressure uh, to the code. And then you for each of the solution, you will have a mass. Uh, profile or uh, uh, and as well as a pressure profile, uh, particle density profile, mass density profile, whatever. Okay, and uh, for a given central pressure, you will get for a single one, okay, you will get a mass and a radius. And if you give a family of uh, pressure, you will have a family of masses and a family of radii. Okay. So uh, uh, how does how do you solve uh, um, differential equations uh, in coordinate radius? Um, so I give here an example of the Euler method, but uh, you can also uh, choose a, uh, uh, the, the, the range kuta uh, to get um, to get it more precise. Uh, okay, so you, you, you have to solve two uh, couple differential equations that I, I, uh, I stress here. Uh, and how do you do that? So um, most probably uh, this is something you know very well. So you need to go, uh, suppose that you have a solution at, uh, at, at point i and you want to know the solution at point uh, i, plus, uh, i plus 1. Um, then you can transform this uh, differential equation uh, into this form. Okay, so you will have the, the left-hand side of this equation, and uh, which uh, will be equal to this one, that you equally equalize to this one. Uh, and therefore, you can transform your differential equation into, um, into a series uh, a series, uh, an, an equation that de defines you, that defines um, uh, uh, a series of masses as you increase the, the, the radius. So uh, it is indexed by 
same index as the one that uh, is used for the radius. So at uh, r i plus 1, you have the mass uh, m i plus 1. OK, and um, and you do and 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 you for for I mean to, in order to get this you need to know the density at a point which is between uh, R i and R i plus one so maybe uh, the best choice is just to take the middle um, uh, and therefore in order to to know the the uh, the mass density you need to know the pressure. Um, um, through the equatorial state, and therefore you need to solve together with the mass. You need to solve the pressure, because from the pressure you will get uh, the uh, through the equatorial state the energy density. Okay, so you have to propagate at the same time together uh, both the the mass, the internal mass, and uh, the pressure. And for the pressure, you do exactly the same. So you discretize this uh, derivative, and uh, you transform this equation into uh, into this equation that you solve uh, iteratively. Then you you have to 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 solve these two set uh, of uh, equations iteratively, but together, okay? Because they are coupled. Uh, Okay, so I think it is not very difficult. Um, and uh, since uh, at the beginning you had to define the central pressure, uh, then at the end you get the radius and the mass associated to this central pressure. And what I was saying before is that uh, in a way uh, you cannot say I want a mass, uh, I, I, I want to uh, construct the... Uh, hydrostatical equilibrium for a neutron star with a given radius, what you do is that uh, you construct your, uh, or you solve your T of V equation for a given central pressure, and that the uh, output, as, uh, as, uh, as the output of the code, you get the radius, okay? And then you can loop back uh, through your code if you want really to target a radius or if you want to target a mass, and you can adjust uh, the central pressure that will provide you your targeted your target mass or your target radius. Uh, this is uh, what you can do, or you just start, and this is what we will do. Uh, you you generate um, an array of central uh, pressure, um, and uh, for each of these pressure, you will uh, determine uh, uh, the radius and and the mass, and then you can create a family of uh, mass radius. Okay. So um, one thing which is also very good uh, when one performs uh, or solves this, uh, I mean, equations in general, and this is a general principle of physics, that you want to solve um, dimensionless equations. You don't want to uh, solve an equation with dimension. Therefore, you have to introduce some scales. So. Um, for instance, I told you that the Schwarzschild radius for uh, solar mass is about three kilometers, which is one fourth of um, the uh, size of the neutron star. So it's a good scale to scale the coordinate. Okay. So for instance, uh, uh, if I introduce this uh, the scale, then uh, the the radial coordinate. I will work with R prime, which is a fraction of um, R Schwarzschild that I will consider. And typically, R prime will be of the order of units. It will be of the order of four, four, five, but then it will remain uh, controlled. The mass, we have seen that it goes from, I mean, one to two, three times uh, solar mass. So to scale the mass with respect to the solar mass is, is not a bad idea. And for the same reason, um, I will, uh, I will uh, introduce um, M prime, so a dimensionless mass, which uh, will be the fraction of a solar mass. 
Okay, for the pressure, uh, we will also introduce um, a scale quantity, which uh, will tell us uh, the fraction of the central pressure which have been imposed. And for the energy densities, okay, you can consider uh, the system with a solar mass uh, 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 bound into uh, a radius which corresponds to the Schwarzschild radius. And that also defines you um, um, a natural unit for the uh, energy density. And therefore, uh, your, uh, your energy density, you can, you can use a dimensionless quantity, which is a fraction of, of that. And by doing that, you will work uh, with some equations that um, uh, are um, uh, dimensionless um, and with typical uh, values, which will be between uh, 0 and 10. And uh, so uh, pretty, pretty simple to, to resolve. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to, to do this work with you, but uh, maybe it is extremely simple. So um, I will um, I will let you uh, do it or convince. Uh, I, you, I will let you be convinced by yourself. So this is these are the TOV, the original TOV system, on the left hand side, and on the right hand side. This is a system that um, you solve once you have introduced these uh, scales. Uh, so this is uh, the dimensionless uh, TOV uh, system. OK. So uh, yeah, I, I don't go further. And uh, I think it is uh, now time uh, to, to start uh, the using the code. So in principle, you have received an archive um, with a TOV solver, and uh, the TOV solver will use it as a, as a black box, okay? So it is in the, the code tovsolver.python, okay? And uh, together with that, you have, a, you have another Python code which uh, shows you uh, how to use this TOV solver. So it is simple. I think there is an underscore, maybe here. Underscore, a sample underscore TOV solver. Uh, and this is the only code, the only part of the code that we will modify together. Okay, so the solver is a black body, uh, is, a, is a black uh, box. Uh, okay, so what, what is in this uh, sample? So uh, I just, uh, so if you go through it, you will see, so I just, uh, uh, show here some uh, snapshot uh, of di different parts of the sample. So this sample is uh, just a few lines uh, which uh, calls uh, the solver. Okay. So first, you have to define the equation of state or the, the file that will uh, upload. Okay. So uh, this is a very lengthy name. Uh, the only interesting information is that this is a Brussel uh, interaction, which is called uh, BSK14. Uh, you have another file, which is uh, SLY5. So this is a, a Lyon-Saclay uh, equation of state. Uh, and uh, what uh, you, you have to call this uh, routine, which will uh, read the file. You have to define, so, uh, Due to historical reasons, these files provides uh, equation of state in the CGS units. But uh, since we are more modern, we use the inter international system. Okay, so this uh, read equation of state will uh, gives you uh, three uh, arrays, which are the, uh, the particle number, uh, the uh, mass density. Um, and the pressure, uh, IS is for um, international system, okay? So it means uh, meters, um, kilograms, uh, seconds, yes, exactly. 
Uh, okay, so uh, these two lines are the lines that allows you to uh, obtain, to extract from uh, from the file um, the quantities that uh, are, uh, I mean, the equation of state that you will uh, that you will use for the theory solver. Okay, and then there are here after that uh, a few lines. Uh, it is just a check or a control where uh, you give uh, for every 50, uh, 50 numbers uh, the pressure, the energy density, and uh, and the particle number uh, in order to to know really what you have uh, you have read. So this is it is nice uh, to do uh, this simple check. Then. The second thing, as I said, is the, uh, you have to define the central pressure. Okay, so uh, in the example, so you can you can define it as a unit number, okay, like that, or you can define it as uh, an array, okay. And here you have three numbers, which are uh, so since it is international international system, it is written in Pascal, um, and these are the central pressure. Um, this is a, this is a suggestion by, by, by me, but you can take whatever you want. Uh, but this is what is uh, what is uh, coded uh, in uh, in your in your file. Is it okay for everybody? Okay. So once you have the what is Pascal? Is it... Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, on my previous, uh, yeah, uh, so hard. Yes. So uh, so here, yes. So here uh, you have so in the international system. Okay. You have the CGS, the previous one, the one that uh, astro astrophysicists likes a lot, and the nuclear. Okay, so the pressure, so the pressure is here uh, in nuclear physics units. Usually, it is MeV per. Okay. Then you have the Barry. The Barry is a pressure in CGS. The uh, um, is a pressure in Newton. Uh, uh, times and 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 Barry. So this is uh, Dean, which is what you should use instead of. Uh, units, but yes, this so the yeah. so the tables are given. Yes, what the code does is that it translates CGS into international system. Okay, but this is a bit uh, technical. Uh, okay, so first you define the, the you you read a file where you have the equation state. Uh, and this is done in the sample. Then second is you define the uh, central pressure. Okay, so here you have three. And then third, you call the uh, TOV solver. Okay, so it is here. And uh, what you give as input are, uh, I mean, the arrays corresponding to the equation of state. What you give as input is also the array with the central uh, pressure. Um, so um, uh, we use uh, range kuta, but uh, even if we use range kuta, we have to define how many uh, uh, the discretization in the coordinate mesh. Uh, so in the code, it is something like uh, one thousand points between zero and uh, and uh, ten times uh, the Schwarzschild radius, and you. Yes, yes. 
So you, you have an option. So uh, here it is adaptative, okay? So you, you can make it adaptative if you want, but uh, we will, uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you want to adapt uh, and, and, and take care about that, you have to turn this quantity into true, but uh, we will, uh, it's, it's already accurate enough. But of course it can be more, uh, okay. Then, then you take range kuta and then the gravity here is important because you can choose for instance general relativity, but you can also turn to Newton if you want to solve the Newtonian system. Okay, so this will be one of the exercises. Uh, and finally, uh, you get uh, you get the uh, uh, the result. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, and and then you can also plot. So this is the end of the file. So for instance, if you want to plot the mass profile, uh, as uh, I, I gave before, um, you have uh, uh, to, uh, um, to ask a matplotlib, okay? And, and then you have, uh, so these this lines is, is to get the plot. Uh, so in principle, so the first thing, and, and the same for the pressure profile, and uh, the same for the mass versus radius. Okay, so in principle, if you just um, launch this uh, sample code by using Python 3, as it is uh, in the readme file, you will get, uh, all of you should get a result. So I, I, I suggest that we start with that, okay? So just launch the code um, and, uh, yeah, and before, uh, and, and that is uh, the starting point. Yes? Yeah. You, you don't need to open the table, huh? You don't need to open the table. Okay, good. It is just an index uh, referring to the line. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 no, it, it, yes, it is because, uh, so this, um, the crust, uh, I mean, the equation of state is built from different pieces. And so this reflects these pieces. But, I mean, uh, we don't use this uh, index. It is just for, for, for the people to, yeah. Why? Uh, why? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is because uh, yeah, you 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 have uh, with this um, model, and and then it stops. Yeah, uh, you you have a kind of instability in this model, um, and, um, and 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 uh, that instability is analyzed, and when it occurs then uh, it stops the uh, calculation of the equation of state. So this is a uh, SCIRM uh, BSK14 or SCIRM SLY5. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just, uh, I, I don't enter into the instability and I just stop the calculation where uh, I, I find this instability. So this uh, defines uh, Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 This is. So, yeah. And any other question? No, it's fine. So, um, 
so it works for everybody, for everyone it works. Good. So uh, then we can go uh, to the practical session. And uh, so I have, uh, I have a set of, uh, of questions that uh, I would like you now. So now the only thing you have to change is a sample. So you can rename the sample with the name you want. Okay, exercise one, two, three, whatever. And, uh, and, and you just need to change the sample file and never change the TOV solver. Okay, I, will, I, I don't ask you to change the TOV solver. Uh, if you start to do that, um, you may, it may take more time. Uh, but to, so what, uh, so you are, uh, what, what I ask you to do is to modify the sample, to enrich the sample, and to work with the solution that the TOV solver provides you. Okay, so uh, so there are several questions, uh, and and you can so it is by order of difficulty. So you should start with the first. Uh, so so um, yeah. So the first question is to compute the maximum mass. Okay, uh, you have two equation state. Uh, you have uh, this BSK fourteen, and you have the SLY five. So these are two files. You can just uh, change the name of the file. And um, uh, and I ask you to compute the maximum mass, uh, 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 and you have to be careful. So so the difficulty here is that um, you have to be careful to include also the unstable branch. In uh, so uh, so in the sample, there are three density, three central pressure, but you have of course to uh, make uh, an array with more in order to uh, have um, a mass which uh, goes up and then goes down. Okay, and as soon as it goes down, then you can localize where is the maximum mass. Because if you if you don't have this bending down, then your maximum mass will always be the the last mass that you have uh, the, the the mass associated to the to the maximum pressure. Uh, okay, so you really so the difficulty is to uh, uh, and, and this is something you have to do step by step. There is no recipe, uh, to my knowledge at least, and you have to test. You have to try to increase um, this array uh, until you reach uh, the uh, the bending down, and then you can identify where is the maximum mass. Okay, so uh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, so so this is a set of, uh, so it's just uh, coding, but uh, it requires that you, uh, that you understand the, the outcomes of, of the code. So now we have um, maybe one hour in front of us to that, to do that, yeah. Okay. So I would say uh, maybe we can dedicate about 10 minutes per question. Uh, if you have any question, just ask me and I, I come to you. Uh, if you have any difficulties, uh, but I, now I, I let you work. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Fortran. Okay. You are not familiar with Python. Yes. I, okay. I, I'm a Good. Classic of both types. If I make nuclear structure, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with Fortran instead of. But I, I like to, to, to learn Python basics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for those of you who do not know Python, which is quite rare. <laughs> and myself, I I am a Fortran practitioner, and I converted to Python for several reasons. Uh, one of them is because now all the young people they use Python, so I was uh, obliged to follow to follow you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's not bad to know Python. I mean, it's uh, very good to know Fortran. Yes. Uh, no, I I write a, a longer quota uh, 
Yep. 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 Okay, so So it works? Not yet. Uh, one thing that uh, I, I forgot to mention, uh, maybe I should uh, modify the code, is uh, suppose that you increase the central pressure to a value which is out of the, of the values that are in your file. Okay, so the file is a table. Okay, the central pressure uh, uh, spans from uh, something to a number to a finite number. But suppose that you... Uh, uh, that you ask the TOV solver to solve it for a value which is out of the table. Okay, so for them uh, now it, it doesn't work. So there is a, a crash, and uh, because you 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 request a number which is too large, for instance. Okay, um, uh, so if you experience this crash, it is simply because you are out of uh, the boundaries allowed uh, by the table. It's, I should have corrected this, but now it, it crashes. Okay. So don't increase um, the central pressure too fast.
Okay, so uh, here is a, a proposal. Uh, you, of course, um, I guess there are as many solutions as uh, you guys. Um, so, for instance, okay, uh, this is a proposal. So if you are considering BSK14, uh, then you can take uh, 10 points with this prescription. And uh, if you consider uh, SLY5, for instance, as the equation of state, you can take this, uh, this prescription. Uh, and uh, what I obtain with this is a maximum mass of uh, 1.93 for BSK, BSK14 and 2.09 for uh, SLY5. Okay, so uh, if if you want, uh, you you can just uh, replace the uh, initial pressure that uh, were in your sample by these ones, and you can check, for instance, uh, one of these two values that you obtain for the maximum mass. Uh, they, they, they could check that they obtain the same numbers. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Of course, um, the accuracy in this number will depend on the step uh, or the number of central pressure that you consider. Okay. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, it can be uh, can be improved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? One of the so so you you I mean uh, um, the the aim of uh, that code is to be uh, computed or to be put together with a MCMC sampler, where you ex uh, explore uh, millions or more of, uh, of equation of states. So. Uh, so there is always a penalty between uh, a, a, a accuracy and time. And uh, therefore, uh, sometimes you don't care too much about the accuracy because you care more about the time. And yeah, it's, you have to, depending on what you do, um, yeah, you have to decide. Okay, so for the first question, uh, is it fine for everybody? I mean, every everyone have a maximum mass for one of the two equation states and uh, obtain something which is compatible with the numbers I gave. So yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what I mean is that uh, this is not written, so they they have to 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 write, and uh, in a way it is necessary for the rest for for the for what comes after. So uh, can I can I move on to the second question? Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Okay, so now the second question. So now you know that um, with um, an input quantity which is called grav, you can go from TOV to Newtonian physics. Okay, so the second question is to ask you to uh, compare uh, uh, a TOV solution with a Newtonian solution. Okay, so for that, you know, uh, so you, you instantiate a TOV uh, whatever, and now you have to instantiate Newton whatever. So you have to call twice the TOV solver, okay, to instantiate with different inputs, two quantities. 
Um, for people who are used with uh, Python, it is pretty natural, I guess. For the others, it's maybe not so uh, intuitive. But I can give more if, uh, if you ask me. Okay. So just to be sure for, for those who have uh, difficulties, so you have this uh, graph and this part is called instantiation. Okay, so I define an object. It is a oriented object uh, uh, program. So I, I, I define an object that I call TOV but you can, in addition, uh, define another object that you can call uh, Newton, for instance, by, uh, by copying this line with a different input. Okay, so if the input is, TOV, is a, a GR, then you can instant, instantiate uh, an object which, uh, that you call TOV or GR or whatever. But uh, if your input here is Newton, then you can in instantiate a second uh, object that you call Newton. And therefore, in TOV and in Newton, you will obtain uh, the two solutions of your system. And uh, exercise two is somehow to define these two objects uh, TOV and uh, Newton, for instance, and then to compare the results. Okay, so I don't ask you to do one. Uh, I, I don't ask you to uh, only to uncomment these two lines in order to get from uh, GR to Newton, but I ask you to define two objects, one with the um, uh, GR solution, and another object with a Newtonian solution. Okay, and then if you have these two objects, then you will be able to manipulate and uh, to, to compare uh, the results. Is it clear enough? If, if it is not clear, just uh, ask me. Yep. So, so this is an example of uh, what you should obtain. Um, so I think uh, that um, the dash line is uh, SLY5, yes, it is, and the, do, uh, and the solid line is BSK14. Okay, so... To disregard uh, the um, general relativistic correction and you solve the Newtonian, yes. Uh, um, yeah, let me see. Uh, yes, you are right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are right. It is, yes, yes. So it is line. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I I I gave this code uh, before. So, 
here, uh, this is right, so line 760, uh, excuse me, Three seven six change R into R two. I think this is the only thing. So uh, in in the TOV solver. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I. I corrected it. Yes. They represent the Newton solution. For the two equation of state. Yes, for the same equation of state. Yeah, well, for the same one, but one is scale. And, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so so this is what you should obtain. And again, this is a maximum mass if you solve uh, the GR equations, but uh, with, uh, with flag zero, which means that somehow the maximum mass is not the last point of the calculation. So this flag zero is just a check that um, I am, uh, I, I have uh, passed the maximum mass and I am in the unstable branch. Okay. And you see, uh, with a, if we suppose a Newtonian uh, gravity, that uh, you're, you explore very large masses, 32 times uh, the solar mass, but the flag instead of being zero is one, which means that the, this mass corresponds to the last mass calculated. So in fact, it means that you haven't reached any unstable branch. Okay, so this is what, uh, this is the meaning of this uh, change uh, of flag. And uh, here, this is mass versus radius. Okay, so you see, uh, you see there, for instance, okay, that uh, there is a maximum mass here and here, in case you solve the TOV equations, but in case you solve the Newton equations for, for this, um, for this um, masses, uh, mass range, you see that your equation state is going up and in fact it is going up and it is it is not uh, bending down. Yes. Yep. Which are non relativistic. Yep. 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 But but this is not a, a polytrop. It's an actual calculation and it's an actual equation of state. So you have different gamma. So the gamma, I, I didn't plot the gamma, but the gammas uh, are changing. I think we, we can maybe discuss this together. Yeah, but it's... Uh... Okay, and, and here in this table, okay, uh, I give you... Uh, so uh, here it is uh, for TOV, and here it is for uh, Newtonian uh, solver. 
um, and you can check. Okay, so uh, so this is for BSK fourteen, and you can check. Okay, that the mass it is going up, and then you see at uh, one nine three it starts after one nine three it starts to go down. Okay, so it means that uh, we are safe in uh, computing the maximum mass because we are reaching the unstable zone, the un unstable branch. But uh, now if we solve the uh, Newtonian equations, you see that the mass increases and it, it doesn't bend down. And you have also for the radius some big differences um, which uh, that, that you observe here, okay? So the radii are different. Okay, so is it uh, clear for everybody? So maybe uh, we can go to the to the next. Can I change the slide? Can I go to the next question? Yes, no? Yes? Okay, so let me change the slide. Okay, so now the question is uh, to compute um, the redshift and the observed radius and to represent uh, these quantities as function of the mass. Um, yeah, and in a way, um, yeah. Okay. So the the redshift are uh, the redshift is given there. Okay. This is how you can compute the redshift. And uh, this is how you can compute the observed radius. And in a way, yeah, uh, I, I give you the answer for this question, uh, and then I will let you um, do it by yourself for the next ones. Okay, so you have this uh, this loop in Fortran. Uh, so the TOV, so I enumerate over, so you 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 uh, in in Python. Huh? So I enumerate over the central pressure, which uh, are stored into my um, objects that I call uh, TOV BSK fourteen. Okay, and from this enumerate, I extract this um, the place where I am because this is so this is um, an, an array. So I can get the value of the array, but I can get also where it is if it is uh, at a place uh, index zero, one, two, three. Okay, so this this command enumerate is 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 in uh, allows you to extract PC. So PC is a value of this array and IPC is a position associated to the value. Okay, so uh, now I can translate this uh, equation there with uh, an MP numpy um, library and I calculate the square root of uh, so I, I use this expression okay so the Schwarzschild radius divided by the radius and uh, times the mass in unit of, of uh, solar mass and this is what is there and then after so you can do uh, as you wish. Huh? It is just um, uh, my own way to do the thing. Then I append. Okay, so I I don't know how many beforehand. It allows me to not to need uh, not to define beforehand 
the number of calculation I will do because I just append at, uh, at the next uh, place in my array uh, the solution and so the solution is, uh, is given there for the redshift and uh, for the observ observational reduce okay I can do the same thing and at the end what I do is that I transform the list, okay? So this is a definition on, of a list in, in Python. And then I transform, and there, therefore, uh, the, what I obtain are uh, understood as uh, strings. But then the last line is to transform these uh, numbers view as strings in, 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 in terms of floats, which are real numbers and on which I can do some operations. Okay, for, so for that, I, 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 I transform this list into a NumPy array. And this is, uh, okay, so then I can, once I introduce this, I can compute for BSK14 and SLY5, I can compute the uh, gravitational redshift as a function of the mass. And uh, so this is what I obtain. So if you remember, you can infer from uh, observation 2.22, and you see that the number I have is compatible with uh, canonical mass uh, neutron star. Okay, is it uh, is it clear or are there any questions? You you may uh, do it in your own way. I mean, this is just a suggestion by myself, but uh, it doesn't mean that there is only one way to answer or to to code in Python. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will I will do that and come back uh, there. So, uh, which number do you obtain? Yeah, for ah, you are running your one point nine. Okay, one point nine three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Index. Yes, but you, you don't care about the index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should not care. Yeah, for the for the so uh, it means that I am considering the Feynman uh, metropolis equation state at low density. Uh, so these are it's a way to define my equation of state. I, uh, I I don't compute it from very low density. I take it from other uh, people, and I start on the in the crust. So you have also okay, okay. Um, the first lines. Uh, yeah, the, the first lines. Yeah, they are there are the the very low density parts uh -huh. that I don't compute. So which, which model? It is a, a Feynman. Um, um, Metropolis, yes, Feynman Metropolis. Yep. Yeah, but you, you don't have the you don't have the pool. You don't have the singularity. For Newtonian gravity, if you have a mm -hmm. non-ideal gas, this can be yep. demonstrated from Lenin, mm -hmm. the mass grows as uh, rho c 
Okay. Well, I, I cannot. Yeah, we should discuss. We should discuss together. Yeah. Um, is it uh, is it okay for this question three? Yes. Ah, I don't know how to reach you. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Uh, let me just zoom in and then I come back. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, on the TOV, on the sample. Yep. Is it uh, okay here? Yeah, it works. Would you agree that we go to the next question or shall I wait a bit more? Who who have finished with uh, question four uh, three? Just raise hand. Nobody. Okay, so just waiting. Vous codez de la même façon ou vous avez des techniques différentes? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I just have a question here, and I would like to clarify. Um, so, you instantiate um, an object which is uh, with, which contains the set of solutions uh, by solving, for instance, TOV equations, and this is what I call 
TOV underscore BSK14. This is my object. Okay, so this quantity is an object which uh, represents a set of um, solutions uh, for which. So this is, I decided myself to call it BSK14. I could call it uh, whatever. But just to remember that the equation of state is BSK14. Okay, so this is the object. Maybe in the sample, it is called only TOV. And if you don't want to modify it, you call it only TOV. And this point, APC means that there is a property associated to this object. So A is for array and PC is for central pressure. So this gives you back something that you gave as input. You gave as input a set of central pressure and as output, um, this um, object gives you the set of central pressure that you ask uh, the calculation to be done for. Okay, and in this way, you need only, and, and, and if you modify, so if you go to uh, Newtonian gravity or if you modify the equation of state, you can instantiate as many objects as you want. You can call it as, as you want, and then you have different properties. So this is a way to uh, make a loop over the central pressure that you ask um, your sample, use your solver to, to do the calculation for. Okay, and uh, for instance, this is another thing which uh, uh, which um, provides as a, so. This is an output. Okay, of the um, object, and it provides the the Schwarzschild radius um, for each. So it's an array again. And uh, it provides this Schwarzschild radius for each uh, initial uh, pressure and therefore uh, neutron star masses uh, that, uh, that you uh, ask for. Okay. Um, and uh, this is uh, another object. So this is. All, uh, still the same object, so TOV BSK14, which has been instantiated initially. And uh, what it uh, provides as output is a radii, um, a set of radii that um, uh, are calculated um, for each uh, central pressure which uh, has been asked. And this is same object and it provides that as output the mass okay associated the different masses while here it is a different radii associated to the uh, different um, central pressure uh, that uh, you have defined uh, initially okay I'll uh, zoom out a little bit.
so I will I will be limited by my battery. At some point, I will. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I have to take it in my office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, you have a question? Very good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, well, maybe uh, you are missing something in the definition of the redshift. So, where where, where is it defined? Huh? Yeah, it is not plus, it is multi. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yep. Okay. Shall we move to question four? Is it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I need an answer. <laughs> Either we, I mean, we don't need to get to the end of uh, this uh, 100 session, so it's really up to you. Okay, let's, so maybe let's try to, to go to the, to the last question, and, um, and that may be, um, well, in fact, uh, question four and five are, are very similar. Okay, so 
so in this question, now I, I ask you to compute uh, volume element, uh, dv. Um, in order to determine uh, the number of baryons in the star and to determine also the rest mass of the star, which is different from the mass of the star. Okay, so it is the mass of the star if you account only for uh, the contribution of the rest mass uh, particles. So, yeah, let me correct something. Okay, so um, uh, just uh, to remind you what we have seen this morning, so So the definition of the number of particles. Okay, so you have to integrate the um, particle number over the volume, and uh, in the volume you have four pi r square r square dr, and of course you have the general relativistic correction. which is very similar to the redshift you have already calculated for the previous question. And Okay. So, so in a way, um, it is very similar to what we have done previously. Um, so, for instance, I want to compute the uh, volume element. So I, uh, I, I define it as a list, and there will be as many volume elements as points in my mesh. But let's assume that I don't know how many points I have. So I will just append. So what I do is I take my object, um, the solution of my TOV, and um, I ask for the profile, so I will, so this is a loop which will loop over all the points in my profile, so all my, um, my step in a radial coordinate. Okay, so I have this loop, and uh, inside I have a loop, so it's a loop inside the loop, so the first loop uh, is a loop o over the uh, central pressure. Okay, and for each central pressure, I make a loop over my coordinate. Because from one pressure, central pressure to another, my, um, my, my metric is different, and, uh, and therefore I have different solutions. Okay, um, so suppose that I don't know was, what is my step in, uh, in, in radial coordinate if I use, for instance, an adapt adaptative step. Okay, so it will vary, it will not be constant. So at each time I, I iterate, I have to redefine what is my step, the R, and I define it as the difference between the radius at um, uh, let me see 
yes, at IR, uh, IRAD, and the radius uh, one, one iteration before. Okay, so if I have a constant step, I always have the same number, but if I have a, a step which is adaptative and which uh, changes as, uh, as uh, I, I go through um, uh, my star, then I have to redefine it every, at every step. Okay, so for the volume element, I redefine the same quantity as what you have done before. Uh, so uh, my, uh, what I call the variable that I call RGR, for instance. So this is, there is nothing changed there. And now my volume element, I append because uh, a priori, uh, I don't know how many points I will have. And this is, you see, there is a 4 pi here. There is a dr. There is the r square here. And there is a general relativist, uh, relativity correction. And this is, uh, okay, so from here to here, it is only to define my... Uh, my volume element. And once I've done that, I uh, again, I convert my list. Now I know the number of points in my list and I convert it in, uh, in a numpy array uh, in order to uh, transform them from string to a float. Okay, and if I want to compute the number of particles, I just have to sum over my elements. So I, I write sum over my dv, and uh, I have to sum the product of this um, density, so number density profile times dv, and uh, if I do the sum, so it's a way to integrate, okay? Then I have my uh, number, my, my, my number of variants. But again, it is my way to do this thing. It doesn't mean that you should apply the same technique and you may have your own way to, to solve it. Yes, question? Yeah. Uh, is mass, like that. Yep. Uh, this is the norm. Uh, What, 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 why is this number is so large? Yes. What? So, uh, yeah, uh, no, there is no lib TOV. Uh, so the library, so it is, uh, so you, uh, yeah, don't change it. It is range kuta, order four, okay? Uh, RK4 is range kuta. So for those who have uh, obtained some results, I, uh, you can compare what you obtain uh, with uh, this table. Okay, so uh, this um, column here. 
which provides you the number of particles, the number of baryons. And you, you can check that it is the, of the order of uh, 10 to 57. So this is uh, somehow expected. And um, you can also determine, so the last column is just the binding energy defined like that. So if you have extracted the number of particles A, so this is how you would define the binding energy. And this is here the way um, the way it is uh, implemented in the code. Yes. So, are you, you it, I died, ah, okay, okay, you have the same problem as me, okay, and you don't have a, a power somewhere? Okay, ah, you don't have the charger, neither. Uh -huh. Okay, and for you, it's clear or, yes, ah, you haven't tried, okay, okay. Yes. Um, this is a proton mass in kilograms. So it is defined at, at the beginning of the file in principle, if I don't mistake. Yes? Okay. okay so uh, M prot is the mass of the proton. And uh, it is defined, so it is, uh, so in the code, uh, at the beginning of the code, you have uh, the mass of the proton, which is defined in kilograms. Uh, the mass of the sun, defined also in kilograms. Um, yep, so you can determine the binding energy. Okay, I think that we've been, uh, we've have reached the uh, the last question. Um, I would say if uh, if you are uh, finished with it, or if uh, you are bored, you can you can leave or. <laughs> So we can stop. We can stop here. I can leave it there if you, if for, for those who haven't finished, but for those who are finished and uh, want to to leave, they can have a break. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.